my friend has been up to something for a long time. Let's check in with him. What are you doing, Eratosthenes? I'm saving some special numbers. Special numbers? Tell us more. Tell us more. What is so special about these numbers? These special numbers are building blocks for all other numbers. Using these, we can form all the other numbers. Seems interesting. Seems like it has something to do with factors. Yes. The sieve separates the numbers based on their number of factors. Why don't we pick some random numbers and look at their factor? We have 3, 8, 13, 15, 20, 24. Can you guess their factors? And these are their factors. Now let's count the number of factors of these numbers. Let's see. The numbers 3 and 13 have only two factors each. These factors also have a pattern. They are one and the number itself. That means that these numbers can't divide any other numbers. Such special numbers are called prime numbers. Ooh. Wait. If these prime numbers can't be divided by any other numbers except one and itself, it also means that they will not be multiples of any smaller numbers than them, except one. Yes, that's how my sieve separates them from the rest of the numbers. So, numbers like 8, 15, 20 and 24 have more than a couple of factors. These numbers can be written as a product of prime number. For example, 15 can be written as a multiple of prime numbers 3 and 5. Such numbers are called composite numbers. Right. So composite numbers are numbers with more than two factors. What about the number 1? Who is a prime number? So is 3. Do you think 1 is a prime number? No, it is not. Because it has only one factor and as per the definition, a prime number will be consisting of two distinct factors. The sieve is a great trick to find all the prime numbers up to 100. To find those, let us start with number 1. As we have seen that 1 is not a prime number, so we can cross it out. Since 2 has no other factor smaller than itself, except 1, we encircle 2. We can cross out all other multiples of 2, that is 4, 6, 8 and so on, as they have more than 2 factors. Similarly, we can encircle 3 and cross out all the remaining multiples of 3. We can repeat the same for 5, and then 7. In circle 11. Oh, wait. Seems like all the multiples of 11 are already crossed out. So, all the remaining numbers which are not crossed can be encircled as their prime number. We have crossed all the composite numbers till 100. All the encircled numbers that fall down from the sieve are prime numbers. While crossed out numbers other than 1 are composite numbers. This is the sieve of Eratosthenes. If we can count all the prime numbers till 100, we can spot 25 prime numbers. Who is the smallest prime number? Great! Now that you are familiar with prime and composite numbers, let's try to observe some patterns. Can the sum of prime numbers be a prime number? Yes. 2 plus 3 is equal to 5 and 5 is a prime number. So the sum of two prime numbers can be a prime number. What about 3 and 7? Adding these numbers would yield 10. And 10 is a composite number. 
It means adding two prime numbers may or may not give us prime numbers. Can two consecutive numbers be prime numbers? Yes, two and three are consecutive and they both are prime numbers. Two and three are unique, they're consecutive prime numbers, as well as their addition results in yet another prime number. Looks like you're ready to hold the sieve and share the work with my friend Eratosthenes. And remember, we stay curious. <laughs>